What's up guys and welcome back to the Drift Games Vlog. We've got a very special episode jam-packed for you today because after today's episode we're taking a small little break because we are heading less than two and a half weeks now until we launch our 2022 Pro Drift Cars. They look completely wild and different and we're heading to getting all those ready in the next week. You guys are going to see them on Tuesday the 9th of November. We're also launching a brand new merch range on the 9th of November as well and on the 11th of November we are heading to the USA for our US tour which is almost 25 days including drift week and tons of other stuff so today i decided it would be a good idea for you guys to come along we'll check out all the cars we have at drift games at the moment which ones we've sold which ones we've kept what's my new daily driver and what the plans are for them over the next couple of months so before we do i also thought i'd show you my office because it's been a long time since we showed this on the channel so i kind of give you guys a little tour and um, as you guys can see obviously the centerpiece is our full uh, Battle Gear 4 arcade machine, which is running a full Fanatec system in it. Vertex wheel, as you guys can see, runs the uh, the shifter, the handbrake, all the Fanatec gear, three pedals, everything. So it's basically an old, kind of early 2000s arcade machine running 2021 technology with Fanatec. And as you guys can see, I've been working on uh, an E46, silver E46 M3 in this because I'm actually practicing some of the tracks that we're gonna be doing on Drift Week on a set of Corsa, but we won't bore you with that. Loads of little memorabilia stuff that I've got here in the room. Some of the coolest stuff that's in here is this full replica of my Drift Games Corvette, which is in a remote control car format, so that's really, really cool. And we've got a ton of other stuff here, trophies that I've won, stuff that I picked up in Japan. Basically, all these are lanyards and memorabilia from different events that I've gone to over the years, from Formula Drift to Saudi Arabia. This is my suit, which we've now retired because we're getting new suits. This is my Stilo Carbon helmet, all retired because brand new suits are coming as well in the next month or so. And um, yeah, there's a random rotor out of an Oryx 7, random bits and pieces in here, but it kind of feels cool. It's got a cool vibe. So. Enough about this, let's head to the road. We're gonna go to the tire box. I need to pick up some tires because I need to fit them on some wheels and then we'll see why in a little while. Before we get to the cars, I gotta stop here at the tire box because I need to pick up some tires for some rims. Sean's here, flat out. Flat out, mate. All the tires. What have we got here? The 23345 Gold Lines. So the, I actually requested these because Sean and the guys here at Tire Box are the official distributors of these. So for some reason, even these are quite a reasonably priced tire, they have tons of grip. So it's like the one tire I found, and I've come here more than I come to Tesco to be fair and I've tried a lot of different ones and these for even drifting, I know Josh uses these for drifting on the back of his and he says they're not far off as semi slick when it comes to the, getting a 265 in them but we're going to grab 235s off Sean, remember if you guys want to grab a set of tires get onto the tire box, I mean they have a few they have a few, so you guys get them out what, next day delivery, next day delivery get on the website, out. you can check what you want and uh, you won't be disappointed. So uh, we're gonna Sean get back to work, he looks busy. We're gonna try and throw these in the car. All right guys, so we're back into the shed and as you can see, lots of parts, lots of stuff going on. I'm gonna guys, give you guys a bit of an update on what's happening. So, we may go over to the, the man of the hour at the moment, which is Tommy Dunn. Tommy is in for hardship as, as usual, Tommy. Both the MX-5 and the Corvette, we'll go to the Corvette in a minute, are going for a wrap this week. So, we're kind of getting a chance to do some of the stuff that we didn't get time to do when we built them first. So, one of the things that Josh was very angry about was the fitment of his back fenders. And the reason being, Tommy, was they were just they just weren't right. Weren't right, don't in a hurry. They were kind of done in a hurry. I'll show you on the other side, actually. Basically, when we put the fender on, it was actually a little too high. So you see where the old holes were? Up here? So that was one of the problems, Tommy, wasn't it? That it was, yeah. on, it was on the wrong angle. Wrong so it was actually angle, yeah. twisting, the, twisting. twisting the whole thing. So this arch was kind of bending. And because of the back bumper, there was a big gap, if you guys can see it. So when you push this in, as you can see, it actually twists this and there was a big gap along here because these fenders are actually for if i'm not they're a universal fender but they're kind of more for an s body then there is no custom arches for an mx5 nc um, it was just a niggly thing it looked okay but it just you could always look at the back arch and go there's something weird there because it was kind of pulling the whole thing in so um it'll that's look a lot better it'll look a lot better 
So that's basically being done this week. The front bumper was uh, cracked on the bottom. Tommy's done a great job of actually repairing that. So front bumper is done. And then we bolt it all back together and we send it off to the guys in Precision Tinted Graphics, the Corvette. My front bumper was cracked, kind of broken. Um, it ended up coming off the car in Tully Row and I hit uh, Chris, Christy Gerrard uh, in the back of his car and actually cracked it and sent the bumper off the car. So that's being fixed by Matty, uh, who did all our carbon work. You guys will know Matty from Wicklow. He's working on that at the moment. Same with the rear end, which I definitely did a lot of damage to. So he's repairing the rear bumper and the rear quarter. The rest is not too bad. We took all the stickers off. Um, a lot of you guys might be wondering how we solved the overheating issues with the car. Well, it's actually down to this. So this cowling, which Tommy also made, is actually funneling all the air into the coolers and the rad. What was happening before was, the air was actually going under the car. It wasn't passing through any of this, so this actually solved it. Although just when Tommy fixed it, and actually got it right, I then did crash into Christy Jarrett. So as you can see, I actually damaged it straight away. So we're gonna have to straighten that up and throw a lick of paint on it, and that should be fine. Um, the rest of the car is staying as is. It's working really well, so I'm happy with that. And the Mustang, so one of the big changes for this car is that the Mustang now handles great. We've got a new power steering pump in there and everything's working pretty good. Wayne's just working on a bit of a service kit for it. But what we're actually going to do, which is a bit strange, is we're taking the supercharger off this car. I have one car that's really expensive to run on a practice day, which is the Corvette. And then I have this, which is even more expensive to run on a practice day. So what I've decided to do is make this into the practice day car. So we're gonna take the supercharger off it. It should drop the power from about 900 horsepower to about 450, 500 horsepower naturally aspirated, which means we can run road tires from the tire box on the back and we get loads of laps and loads of practice and loads of seat time, which is the whole point, right? Follow me over here. You saw us get the tires from the tire box. We're gonna be putting on these rims. This is my first time seeing these ones actually. Yeah, these are a bit dusty at the moment because we are flat out on the old fiberglass in here. So these are the DS25s in bronze. They're pretty cool. Very nice, aren't they? Nice color. It's like so, almost like a champagne. Yeah, it's not like a proper dark bronze, which I kind of actually like that they're not, and they're not gold either, so they're kind of a, an in-between, which I quite like the color. So these are going on a car today, but they're not staying on that car. There's a lot going on. We're gonna to get to that in a little while. So basically, these wheels are going on my E46 project, which is outside. Let's go have a little reminder of how bad that looks. Okay, so this is my E46, which you guys don't know I bought two or three months back. The actual chassis of it is very, very clean. No rust, it's all good. Um, but it's a 318 automatic. So in a previous episode, you'll have watched us go to Chris Burnett. He had the magic transforming car. So he had a 323 in his yard that he wasn't using. I ended up buying that 323 and this car is gonna get a complete transplant from a 318 automatic to a 323, but we're gonna change the manifold and the ECU which will essentially make it a 325. So the idea is we're gonna make this a very cool car that has a lot of show and a lot of go. So the bronze DS25 that you saw in there are actually gonna go on this car. The car is gonna get a full respray and I'm gonna go back in and show you the kit. I'm gonna stop you one second there for a second. You said you bought that car as a daily which is incorrect, you bought that car because you bought a kit for it first. I bought the body kit, then I had to justify buying the car. I said it was a daily, but now it's definitely not gonna be a daily, so. Well, it might be, it'll still be a road car, but it, I think it might actually be a drift car as well. It's not gonna be a daily. Okay, so this is the full click tuning body kit from the guys in Latvia. It's front bumper, back bumper, over fenders, roof spoiler, everything. So it's all there, doesn't look much now, but that's going on to the 318. So the plan next week is to take that 318 to our good friend, Stephen Halferty, who's a drifter from Ireland, and he's going to do the full transplant of everything from the 323 into the 318, manually convert it, do an exhaust, put some BC Racing coilovers in, which we have here. I've got smoked rear lights, I've got uh, orange front indicators, got loads of stuff for this car, seat rails. We're gonna put the option seats into that car, probably put a hydro in it. So the idea with it is gonna look cool, it's gonna be a really mad color, it's gonna have DS25s, it's gonna be on coilovers, and it's gonna have a hydro, so it's kinda of like a drift car I could take to the bashes, and something I can drive on the road. But we're not gonna see that car until we come back from the US, because Steve's gonna take a little bit of time just to get the whole swap done, and we have to cut out the arches and all that stuff. So that's not important, but just to remind you guys, a lot of people have asked me what's happened with the E46, it's gone a little bit from a cheap project to like a lot of stuff, as, as usual. Anyway, here's another body kit. So this yeah, body kit. another one. Another one. So this body kit is from Origin Labo, and it's a front bumper, back bumper, side skirts, and roof and boot spoiler, all 
for the new daily, which you're about to see uh, in a couple of moments time, because we're gonna go down and check it out. I also purchased these absolutely enormous wheels from JDM Distro. So these rears um, are 18 by 13 minus 22 on the rear, which is absolutely enormous. The fronts are 18 by 10 minus 15, I think. So they're huge. And the plan is to put them onto the red PS13, but maybe later on this episode, I'm gonna pull the overfenders off and I'm gonna show you how massive they are. But these I wanna put on the PS, the reason being is that they're just gangster wheels and I want that car to be really JDM styled. So I think that gets everybody up to speed. If you're wondering where the Spirit Ray car is, it's in the other shed. One thing I have over there in a the box for that car, which is only two things that's actually happening to the Spirit Ray car, is I got Lambo door hinges from the boys. Uh, oh. uh, yeah, Lambo door hinges are there from Danny Wyman at Low Origin in, in the UK. Where else would you find them? Only the Low Origin boys had PS13 Lambo door hinges. The car originally had Lambo doors in Japan. I'm not sure why they took them off it. I think probably for transport because they were putting it on a ship and they were afraid maybe someone would pull the door off or whatever, I don't know. We need to get that back to the way it was. And I also have underglow there as well for it, which I'm gonna put like a, a green underglow on the car to match the, the pinstripe. Yeah. So that's all that's happened in that one. So what we're gonna do now is head down to my good friend Dan in Moorhead Motors. He has imported from Japan my new daily. He also has the PS13 there, which we're gonna bring back. He's been checking it over. So let's hit the road. So we're here at Moorhead Motors, my good friend Dan, who's been uh, looking after cars for me for probably about 10, 12 years now, this thing, Dan, maybe longer? Yeah, don't make me feel old, Dave. <laughs> yeah, so uh, last time we were here, we were checking out some cool JDM stuff that Dan had down here, but the place looks totally different now. Like, you guys spent, what, almost six months transforming it all? Yep, we did a bit of a refurb on the place, and we have it looking a little bit more modern now. Dan does your regular servicing and all that good stuff for cars and all mechanical stuff, also imports uh, JDM cars, which is why I'm here today to show you guys my new daily driver, which Dan imported for me, but he's had the PS13 for the last week or so. I just wanted to give it a bit of a check over, and we put on our bronze DS25. Uh, it, I think it actually looks really well on this. I think the bronze with the kind of maroon looks very, very good. The thing I love about your place, Dan, is you never know what you're gonna come across at every corner, so take us on your tour true. around, because I actually think you guys are gonna enjoy this. 180SX. 180SX, yeah. Kind of a doer upper. That is, yeah, that's a project car. I've actually recently sold that car to a friend of mine, what they call it. That'll be coming to another YouTube channel near you fairly soon, oh, I would say. Very so good. Ooh. We won't say who, we won't say when. Yeah. Fresh import, 432, getting pretty rare now. Yes, that one is just in off of the port last week, so we're currently doing a bit of work to it. Um, it's been in for VRT inspection and it should be on a registration hopefully in the next two weeks. Lovely. That is the wife's R42, which has currently been took apart at the moment now to get a bit of restoration work done. It's getting new sills, new floor pans, um, getting an awful lot of work done to it to make that car mint. And they're worth it now because obviously they're getting pretty rare. Yes. If you guys are fans of the Irish Drift Championship back in the day, this was Joe Doyle's car, built by him, bought by Dan. And then a lot of work done since then on lots of different bits and pieces to make this thing even more crazy. Yes. An R33. Okay, they're getting prettier. Mm. But they were kind of the ugly duckling of the Skyline family. But Joe actually did a really good job on molding in parts that are not for an R33 Skyline. Yeah, the like front the wings are all custom made more or less by Joe. Like, look at this. All this stuff is all custom made. The showpiece of this car now is... Uh, What's under here? The Akatarak one's left now. There could be that's under there. This is the heart of the beast. So this is running a Orbi 25. 25. Uh, fully built, currently running 560 axle horsepower. We've retuned it a couple of times. I didn't like the power band of it after we had initially tuned it, so he's changed the power band now, managed to bring, while well, it's not making the peak power that it was originally, it's a far more drivable Yes, car. it's on its all up top. Yeah. What we would have had quite a notch of expertise put into the build of it, um, which does show yeah. I absolutely came this for about 15 continuous practice laps and Jack Veston never had to open the bottom. That's absolutely car. fantastic car to go. Yes, and then we've got, this looks like a regular PS13. Little bit of a sleeper, yeah. Not an SR20, but an RB26. So the engine from 
what I assume is an R33 GTR? No, uh, it's actually a 34 GTR wow. engine in this. car was built by a chap called Adam Moles for a friend of mine. Um, Adam put it all together and then it went to Richard Bradley's and Richard done a lot of the pipe work and put together some of the wiring in it, but like 90% to 95% of the work would have been done by Adam, let's say, but really well put together there. running stockish power or a little bit of... Oh, there? no, no, but this has pretty much everything that you can throw at it at the moment. Um, big Garrett Corbo, it's the newer Gen 2 GT35. Uh, there is a six boost manifold on it, Link ECU, Siemens injectors, I think the car is running roughly 500 axle horsepower on pump fuel at the minute. A car that looks like it would have a 250 horsepower SR20 in it. Yes. I like that. This bit was a non, non-turbo car, non-turbo SR20 converted to RB26. That's awesome. Car is a complete sleeper from start to finish. Mark II, JZX 100 Mark II. See, most of the videos that we've done, I've been so confused by JZX 100s, 110s, Mark IIs, Crestas, all of that. I said, I've got to sort out, I've got to just buy one, and then I won't be as confused then anymore. You'll know. Then I'll know. So I know that this is a JZX 100 Mark II. And this car is a two liter automatic, so it's not the 1JZ, not the fancy one, but I wanted something that was a daily car, kind of cheap to tax and run but looked cool. You guys saw already today that there's a full body kit for it from Origin Labo. So we're gonna do a front bumper, back bumper, side skirts, roof spoiler, boot spoiler. There's a bit of lacquer peel on the roof and the bootings. So we're gonna get that sorted out. And uh, our friends at Moorfield Motors are gonna help us out with all that in the next couple of weeks. But also the reason that this is now on the DS25s in bronze is that the DS25s in black are gonna go onto this. And we have a set of BC racing coilovers which should land tomorrow or so. So the idea is to make it look really cool, drive nicely, VCs on a kind of a more comfortable setting, have it low, have it stanced, have it look great, will pretty much be a normal standard car. If you want to live the life of a Japanese taxi man, I'm about to live that life. Mm. Look, at the, look at this, look at this pattern. Look at this. It's, like, mm. it's like my granny's couch. It's just it's lovely. Um, and it comes with, of course, that's all real wood. It's not real wood. So uh, it's got the wood steering wheel. So my plan with this is that I'm going to put in a CarPlay system into it. I'm going to upgrade the speakers. I'll put a jazzier set of seats in it and maybe a narrowly steering wheel. But I don't think I'll be doing too much more than that. But um, yeah, it's super clean. Check this out. It's like... The boot big enough for bodies. Yeah, that's where you can throw Josh now when he annoys me. You can just throw him in the boot and take him there. But like, it is super clean. Like, oh wow. Like, look at that. Absolutely spotless. Actually, that's cleaner than some of the cars I've had that are like 2016, 2017 when you open it up. I'd nearly be suspicious of that. <laughs> yeah, that's the original spare wheel, everything in there. But I'm still going to keep it in two tone. I think that's really cool. So we're going to go black DS25s, BC Racing coilovers, lower it, put the kit on it, and it should look like a really nice cruiser for every day. It's not going to be the fastest car in the world, but that's not really what I'm buying it for. I just want it to kind of be a cool cruiser. And I don't own any cars with back seats, back doors, or a boot right now. So I need to, for practical reasons, have a bit of space. So I'm really chuffed with it. Thank you very much, Dan, for bringing it in. No problem. All right, guys, we're in Mundello Park. With the lads. Uh, why are you here? <laughs> very enthusiastic to see me, as you can see. So um, we're dropping in, Adam, because I want to show, well, I want to show a, a sneak peek. Keep right, it well, then I'm going to strategically <laughs> Yeah, that. that that'll, that'll get us thrown off YouTube. We're just giving you a sneak peek of the merch. So Adam's been working on this for the last couple of weeks. I think it's probably the wildest range we've done. But it's the most comprehensive, largest, most detailed, and most design oriented. Yeah, a lot of big words there. Yeah, it sounds good. It sounds ever, ever, ever done. No, that's like genuinely. And, it's and the there's loads order. of colours. Loads of colours. The biggest order we've ever placed. The most hoodies we've ever ordered. The most 
accessories we've ever ordered. So scary. It sounds like we were spending a lot of money here. It sounds like a big sale. Yeah, it sounds like we're uh, we're in a bit of trouble if it doesn't sell. So you know, wink, wink. Uh, but it is out on the uh, the 9th of November. So here's a little. So we're not go too much through it, but how do we? I've, I've hidden one more. We've hit, we've had to hide two because they have got the car liveries on the t-shirts, <laughs> so we can't show you those. The worst ever. So we have garage banners. The second garage banner we can't show you because it gives away the cars. We've got flight tags. We've got lanyards. We've got what are these things called? These carabiners. Maybe? Carabiners, yeah. Carabiners or car I don't know how to pronounce it. We've got. We have to figure that out before you put it on the website, Adam. Yeah. I know. How to, I know how to spell it. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> we are professionals here. Yeah. Drifting. We got beanies. We got snapbacks. We got T-shirts. We've got three or four colors in different uh, of our. These are our core range of the ones that were already out. You guys will already have seen these. Air fresheners. Old school. Got some air fresheners coming out. We've got some gift boxes coming out. That's something we're going to do for Christmas where you guys are going to get like super value when we put a load of stuff into one box and we're going to throw a load of goodies in and you can buy it for someone as a present and it's got like a, a big bang of stuff in it. So that's not, really good. not for sale in super value though. Not, not in super value super. or Centra, yeah. but on our website. Yeah, Black Friday, yeah. Super Monday, Christmas presents coming up. You can fit hoodies, boxes, everything. It's a nice presentation. Instead of yeah, and we're going to do some very special stuff where we take some product from our sponsors. We're going to lay out like, you know, 50 like boxes of hoodies and t-shirts and posters and stickers and all that stuff. And we're going to drop like golden tickets into some of them which have like coilovers, ECUs, all that kind of good stuff. So stay tuned for that. So it's going to be pretty cool. What about Chocolate Factory? The what now? Any chocolate factories? No, we've eaten that all. No, okay. Chocolate? Yeah. There was chocolate here and I was I missed it. That's, well, that's why it's gone. Sorry, I'm in the gym, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this is uh, our new team gear. I'm not going to zoom in too much on this, but this is a little bit of a hint of the color that the cars are going. And there's all of this stuff is now... There is a lot of colors in it. Just, yeah. A lot of people are saying what colors are in the drift cars. There is at least... In the cars, I think there's at least 14 colors, which is a lot. I think. So you might look at that and go, oh, I know what the colors are going to be, but... No, nah. so there's a lot more going on. So yeah, we've got this new t-shirt for a US tour, which we're going to launch as well. So it's got like an Irish flag, Drift Games, and the US tour on the bottom. So all of this stuff is coming out very, very soon. We're launching all of this in real life, so you guys will see it all. Um, and we've also got a bunch of stickers, because a lot of people are requesting us to do stickers for their cars. So we did that. We've got visors. we got everything. So we got a lot of stuff coming. So um, that's pretty much all we can show you here. But I was checking in with Adam today just to make sure everything's going okay. And it looks like it is going okay. It's all ordered now, Adam, right? It's all ordered. It's all... It's the scary part is done. Paying for it is done. Oh, we're a broke now. And uh, Keen is working away on... So a lot of people think we just do drift games all day and they never see you because you're no. not doing drift games. You're just, doing... I'm just sitting here in a little corner. Just quietly. So Keen is running the other side of the business, which is Loud by Design. So if you're in the market for... Listed. it. Okay, we do digital marketing, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Google ads, we can do YouTube ads, TikTok ads, Snapchat ads, and video services. So Blaine, you're behind the camera here, but you can actually pay for Blaine to come and make you a video. I don't, or, have, I don't know if that's selling it. Uh, it depends, that depends what opposite. it is though. Okay, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe we didn't sell that yeah, quite Don't send it to Blaine well coming because people get no. scared of Blaine. So yeah, what basically, but what am I going to do? Like, a uh, video, uh, video, well, Josh is bad as well. So, yeah, a uh, videographer will come. Yeah. Uh, An a normal, normal person videographer. will come and make a video. So, we do video advertising, commercials, yeah. all that kind of good stuff. I think as I'm well. getting a bit of a bad rap here now. Okay. I, I, I'm all right. Bitch, stop talking. Yeah, or else I know it's you. Behind the camera, the camera can't talk. Uh, <laughs> if you guys are in the market for any of that good stuff, uh, the team here are all flat out at the moment doing all that good stuff across yeah. the world. And um, if you're in the market for any of that stuff, if you want your company to kind of get out there more to people online, hit up the Loud by Design website, talk to Keen. Yeah. He'll sort you out. I don't quite Message us through the website, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna go back to what I do best, putting wheels on cars. All right, so we're back in the shed. We only put these wheels on, as we said, temporarily. These are the wheels that are gonna be going on the E46 with the click tuning kit. So we just left the Black Stroms at Dan's because the BC coilovers are landing there, the body kit will drop down, and that car is gonna run the black strong. You'd probably say, why am I ruining a perfectly nice, good car? So, there's a reason for it. I have, I'm not gonna say that I've said this, but a lot of people have said this, one of the nicest PS13s in the world, which is the Spirit Ray car. And I can't have any real input on that because that car is almost perfection. Bar Lambo doors, I'm doing nothing else with it. But I love modifying cars, and it's winning shows and stuff, but, it's very much bought, not built, and that's kind of not what I want. I love the car, I love owning it, but I wanted something that I could make my own that's unique. So this car, while it's a lovely road car, it's really, really nice, I want to make it the most badass PS13 I possibly can, just so to try and almost compete with the other car or at a show or whatever, it doesn't look like one is better than the other. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off the over fenders because I have some massive chrome wheels to go on this car. 
I know for a fact they won't fit with these over fenders and I'm not sure how, I think these are 25 mils. So what I'm gonna try and do is take these off and then put the wheels on to give us a vision and then I'm gonna know do I need 50 mils, 75 mils, 100 mils, whatever, fenders to make those wheels work. We're also putting a different body kit on this car which we'll show you in a future episode. I'm not even gonna keep it a secret, it's a D-Max Type 3 kit. So I wanna go D-Max Type 3, really wide chrome wheels, really low and big fenders. Um, for a road car, I think that's going to look amazing in this colour especially. So yeah, let's drill off these rivets on these uh, over fenders, put on the wheels and we'll be able to measure how much work we need to actually get these wheels to fit. New wheels. Very jazzy wheels, aren't they? So these are... 18 by 10 minus 22s on the back. They're in really good condition. All the little spots that you can see on them, that's actually just water damage, I think, just from sitting up. They actually don't even really need a polish. I'm gonna give them a polish, though, when I get them on the car. But uh, now we gotta see how ridiculous these are and how much work we're gonna have to do to make them fit. Is that odd? That's oh odd. my God. Yeah. A bit of work to do there now, isn't there? the camera is straight on the back so I think we'll be able to camera them a little bit so I'll kind of know how far away we are when I measure them in a bit. Do you know what? She might just work. 100 mil is what you need. You need 100 mil fenders yeah and they'll just literally line up with the edge of the rim. Right. So Get ordering. that's a good thing and a bad thing. The bad thing is there's only two options for 100 mil fenders. One, one is rock a bunny, but I don't want to rock a bunny the car. And the other is in the United States. So I'm gonna to have to order from the United States. So tomorrow what I'll do is I'll throw the fronts on, I'll give them a measure up and see what they're at. And then we'll take some pictures and stuff with you guys will see on social media. And yeah, we'll basically spend the next week working on these two. So tomorrow we're gonna to get on the MX-5, the Corvette. You guys are gonna see them on the 9th of November, which is Tuesday at eight o'clock, brand new liveries. What sponsors have we on board for 2022? They look bananas. Totally different than anything else out there, I think. Really wild. We were pretty subtle this year. We're definitely going wild. And on that night, as you saw earlier in the episode, the brand new merch range is coming as well. So thank you guys if you're going to pick that up. That'd be amazing. We put a lot of time and effort into it. It's the biggest launch of merch we've ever done. And on the 11th, we're going to Drift Week in the USA along with a US tour. So lots coming up on the channel. However, that's all you're gonna see from me until the 9th of November. We're gonna take a week behind the scenes to get those cars ready and make sure that that video is awesome and cinematic for you guys on the 9th. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. You can follow me at David Drift Games on Instagram as well if you want some behind the scenes. Until then, until the brand new cars come out, we're gonna leave you there.